Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Just Jocelyn. I'm your host, and I'm glad you could join me this afternoon. As you know, summer is a tough time. The weather's kind of crazy. Things are, you know, end of school. We got graduations. We got weddings. We got everything going on. So I'm going to do the news. I'm going to do stories across the nation and kind of what's going on. Maybe you missed it. Maybe you didn't. But um, I think it's important that we kind of touch on all these different things. So starting right off, put my glasses on, in local news, don't I sound official? In Merrimack on June 6th, a couple days ago, there was an explosion in Merrimack. Uh, it apparently prompted several federal agents to respond to the scene. The Merrimack Police Department said officers, firefighters, 911 responders uh, went to the intersection of Pearson and Grapevine uh, just about 1.30 in the afternoon. Uh, they had received numerous reports of an explosion, so it must have been pretty darn loud. I'm thinking as loud as those jets and the sonic boom when they went after that plane that uh, got into the D.C., Washington, D.C., the White House air. Yeah. So... Um, Let's see, this one lady says, it sounded really sharp and fast, okay? Um, that's an odd, I'm not going to comment. I, I find that an odd uh, explanation and definition, but it scared her, and that's what counts. It shook the house, rattled the window panes. Uh, when the first responders arrived, they found evidence of a possible explosion, which prompted them to secure the scene and surrounding area. Uh, the um, surrounding video cameras in the neighborhood captured the sound of the explosion, so it was more than just a few people saying it. And um, one of the cameras actually was shaking when it happened, so that's pretty, that's pretty evident if you ask me. Um, I, I find it funny that they called it a quiet, quaint town. It's, it's a pretty big town. Um, it's grown over the years for sure. Um, the members of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives were spotted at the scene with local police officers and firefighters. Uh, Merrimack Police confirmed that this incident is actively being investigated. No threat to the public. Nothing's happened since. Um, I believe there was a fatality, but just reading as we go. You want to find out exact details? This is the perfect time to do research. So that's local. Uh, tomorrow night, 6 o'clock in Amherst in the high school theater, the school board has <clears throat> allowed the parents, the taxpayers, and the voters to express their opinion on pornographic books that have been found in the school libraries. And um, they will not be answering any questions. Um, this is simply a forum for people to express themselves. Well, I'm gonna express myself for the moment. I will be there tomorrow. Um, we have a number of people speaking on one book in particular. And um, there are legal issues with this. There are moral issues with this. There are tax implications with this. And I think um, there's going to be a number of people that will be presenting these different facts and points of view um, throughout the night. We do have a large group of people that have expressed that um, they will shout us down. Uh, they will be loud. Um, a number of us have been called Nazis and book banners, which is uh, pretty darn rude if you ask me. Um, you know, kind of like um, Dr. Seuss was banned. They don't want to remember that, do they? Bottom line, property taxes are paying for pornographic books that Amazon, the FDA, the CDC are saying not appropriate for anybody under 18. And you might have a few over 18 in the high school. Well, you know what? Go to the store and buy it yourself or go to a town or city library and rent it there. These books should not be in any school library of anybody under or accessible to anybody under the age of 18. Kind of where I'm coming from. So that's tomorrow at six in Amherst. All right, moving on. So I don't know if most of you have noticed, but the air kind of stinks of smoke. 
Uh, Monday and Tuesday were horrendous. Uh, people complaining of burning eyes, burning throat, excessive coughing, runny nose, red eyes, irritated lungs. Um, surprise, surprise, there are multiple fires in Canada, actually across Canada. I find it um, quite interesting that this many fires broke out across the entire country of Canada. We've got some in Quebec. We've got them uh, over in the West. Um, uh, what I want to know is how, when it comes across the border, and obviously there's all sorts of different levels uh, in the atmosphere, so they travel at different levels. But I want to know how it, we got a little bit of it, and some of the states got a, a, a feeling, a touch of it. But it all seems to be in Boston and New York and New Jersey. How does it bypass us and the majority of the smoke just kind of funnel over us and then drop down into these three cities. Um, I haven't heard about Chicago, but I'll just talk about the East Coast because that's where we are. Um, how it all ended up there. And people are describing uh, very difficult to, you know, very difficult to breathe, very difficult to see. Um, they have the uh, pollution rate way, 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 way up. I think at one point it was higher than uh, in China. So that's kind of scary. So I'd love to know how all those multiple fires started across the entirety of Canada. So going to read the official, official report. Air quality alert. And that's till, I believe it's till midnight tonight, and tonight is Thursday. Severity unknown. The severity of this alert is not known. The alert is in effect, again, until 12 a.m. tomorrow morning. Description. The air quality alert is in effect till midnight. The New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services has issued an air quality alert for particle pollution. That's bits in the air. Until uh, midnight. Yeah, 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 whatever. The New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services is predicting unhealthy air quality. Sensitive individuals include children and older adults, anyone with lung disease, such as asthma, emphysema, bronchitis, and people who are active outdoors. Even healthy individuals may experience mild health effects and should consider limiting strenuous or prolonged outdoor activities. Okay. Gosh, doesn't it sound eerily reminiscent of a lockdown that happened, oh, I don't know, two years ago? <sighs> Something stinks here. Maybe it is just fires. It's an awful lot of them. And an uh, awful lot of my friends up in Canada are expressing suspicion on what's going on. All right. In national news, Jacob Chansley, that's the gentleman that wore the furry hat with the uh, horns, painted his face in uh, red, white, and blue, walked through the Capitol on June 6th, posing, taking pictures, and I clearly said walking through. Well, he was thrown into jail. He is in a halfway house in Phoenix until end of May. Well, it's now June, so it's just a tad late, where he will be fully released. It's 14 months early, so about an, uh, a year and two months early. And funny enough, it happened right after Tucker Carlson showed the public the actual, verifiable, real video of the Capitol Police allowing him to walk freely through the Capitol building and in many instances, opening doors for him and ushering him into the different rooms. Huh. There was also many other people that were escorted by the Capitol Police, invited in by the Capitol Police. I wonder if they're going to be released. And many of them have still, to date, not had a hearing. How do you like them apples? What happened to innocent till proven guilty? Hmm. All right. We also have, in New Hampshire, 
but it's actually all across the United States, a plea to the legislators, because as I've told you many times, there's three branches of government. You have the executive, both federal and state, president and governor. You have the legislative branch, federal and state. You have the judicial branch, federal and state. And both of those have a Supreme Court, for those of you that don't believe me, they do. So the plea has gone out to the legislative branch because the legislative branch is the only branch that can make law. The executive branch, the president governor, cannot make law. The judicial branch cannot make law. The executive branch enforces the law. The judicial branch opines, makes opinion on law. Something that's not happening and hasn't been happening in a very, very long time in this state or in the United States. So the plea goes out to the people, which the Constitution of the state of New Hampshire was written by the people for the people, and we give our needs and wants to the legislators who bring a bill forward to the floor on our say-so, on our behalf. Not the lobbyists and the people that pay them and all the little side deals that they get. What we ask them to. But that doesn't happen. It hasn't happened for decades. And they don't know any better. We are demanding that any statute, law, rule, or regulation, which is in the Constitution, which is contrary and repugnant to the New Hampshire Constitution, is void. The Constitution protects our 39 innumerable rights, rights given to us by God. The Constitution of New Hampshire protects that. That's its job. The legislators need to wake up. And you need to wake up fast because we the people are coming and you're going to be fired. And I don't mean voted out because we're done with that. You know, I talked earlier about the meeting in Amherst tomorrow night at 6. We are protecting our children from predators. In the end, we are protecting the most vulnerable, our children, from predators. It's a heated topic. I don't know why, because the most innocent under the age of 18 should be protected at all costs from child abuse, sexual abuse, uh, um, bullying, you name it. That includes pornographic books. They want them, they get them when they're 18, when they're an adult. We're talking about statewide distribution of cartoon porn because many of the books have cartoons. And I'm sorry, just because you draw it in a cartoon does not make it okay, does not make it fine for children. But I think that's done for a reason. The sexualization of our children from kindergarten, from kindergarten to high school. Some of these books include directions on how to set up online accounts, meet people in person with similar sexual interests, top and bottom surgery, vulgar and explicit content, etc., etc., etc. The vulgar and explicit content that are in these books and expressed on some of these online chats are so bad that the school boards won't allow us to say the words. So if you can't express these words in these books that are in our school libraries because they're offended or, oh, 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 my ears, then why do we have these books in the schools when adults from the school board that made these decisions won't even hear it? That people are routinely thrown out of school board meetings and hearings and committee meetings when you read the pornographic vulgar trash in them. Hmm. 
Look inside your child's library. Check out what the books are. It's not appropriate. And oh, by the way, could anybody please tell me how any of these books get my child, your child, into college? How does that further their academic excellence? What, nothing? Crickets? Hmm, thought so. That's what we've been hearing for months and months and months. Get involved, people. Get involved. It's a very expensive babysitting service we have at the average is around $24,000 to $26,000 per child to educate them in this state. And we don't even have 50% literacy in reading. Barely 50% in a majority of cities in math. But we're gonna put this pornographic trash out there because somehow it's gonna get little Johnny and Julie into a top college so that they can graduate and be a functioning uh, adult in this world. Maybe a doctor, maybe a scientist, who knows? But you're taking that chance away when you allow garbage like that in the schools to interfere with their academic education, which you and I pay for. Somehow you forget this. Our property taxes pay for the education. And when you go to school board meeting and some little smart ass says to you, oh, you don't have any kids in the school. No, I had four of them. They're now in college. Well, sit down. You don't have any skin in the game. Really? I got one boatload of property taxes is my skin in the game, and I'm a citizen of the state, and I'm a voter in the state, so I got one heck of a lot of skin in this game. So maybe you need to sit down, and maybe you need to zip it, and you need to listen. Because what have you been here for, three, four years, and I put four kids through this school times 12 years? Huh. Who do you think knows a little bit more? Who's got more skin in the game? Moving on. So, little section I like to call hypocrisy and lies. So this is a little truth bomb. It's a little half and half. So this is what people think is not okay and what is okay. And um, this one happens to be about money. So at spending money, about $100 at the healthy grocery shop, and I'm not gonna name any of them, store, is too expensive. You can't spend that kind of money at, at an organic store, at a, at a healthy store. But it's perfectly okay to spend a hundred bucks at a fast food joint or a chain store for a dinner date. And that doesn't include drinks, oh, by the way. Because <laughs> we know those are anywhere from $10 up. It's absolutely disgusting, and we can't afford that. This should not be allowed. $100 spent on vitamins and supplements. Huh. Not acceptable. Can't afford that. Absolutely out of the realm of possibilities. But it's okay to spend on one night out drinking $100 every week. That just does wonders for your kidneys and your liver. Not to mention, are you driving buzzed or drunk? Hmm. That makes it really expensive, doesn't it? A personal growth seminar, $250. Are you insane? That's crazy. You have to be nuts. No one would ever spend that money. These are comments. This is what I'm reading. But let's buy that Gucci belt because it's only 250 and I need it. Those Nike sneakers, oh God, 175, yes, yes, must have. See where I'm going? Hypocrisy, hypocrisy, hypocrisy. Start a business, $1,000. I can't justify that, that's way too much money. Start a business, no way, $1,000. Well, you know what? It's about time for my new iPhone 13, 14, whatever they're on. I need the newest model, $1,000 for your phone. But I need the newest model. I have to be 5G. 
I have to have the 17 cameras on the back. Hmm. Okay. 60 minutes at the gym. Get yourself healthy, flexible, you know, getting rid of that extra weight, working your lungs and your heart. I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have any time for that. None. 60 minutes minimum per day watching Netflix. Oh, well, that went by really fast. Let's do another episode. Another episode. Oh, I, just one more movie. Just one more movie. As you're sitting on your proverbial tush, mm -hmm, eating God only knows what and drinking God only knows what, totally your decision, but here's the hypocrisy that we hear every single day. Here's the thing. Everything in life is about priorities. What are you going to prioritize? What's going to dictate to you what's good and what's bad, what you can and you can't do? Where will you be in two years? Where will you be in five years? Time we make, we the people, important. And our children and family, God, family, country, period. Do you not see they're dividing us? Do you not see they're dividing every little bit of it? Pretty soon we're going to be just like China. Going to shave everybody's hair off. Everybody's going to wear the same clothes. And you will be happy. Mark my words. All right. Here's a little, here's a little segment for everybody. History. The year was 2000. I'm oh, sorry, 2013. 1913. Excuse me. The most, in my opinion, and in many people's opinion, but in my opinion, the most important year in American history. Why? The Federal Reserve was founded, income tax created, which, oh, by the way, if you read on their website, it says totally voluntary. Did I say that out loud? Go read it. It's on their own. Henry Ford invented the assembly line. Rockefeller Foundation was founded. ADL was founded. 17th Amendment takes America from a republic to a democracy because it became a corporation. We are a constitutional republic. It takes two-thirds of the population to amend the Constitution. That's not changed. But because they're running the whole country as a corporation, they're getting away with a whole bunch of things. Okay. I got a lot more. It took me a long time to do this. So, wow, I have a lot of news to tell you. All right, let's jump forward. A um, couple weeks ago, the Durham report was released and it shows that Obama, Biden, the attorney general, the FBI and the CIA all colluded with the Clinton campaign to unleash Project Crossfire, Crossfire Hurricane investigation on Trump. Collusion. Mm -hmm. Here's the other little thing that the report showed. Trump declassified the records the day before he left office. So nothing in his hot little hands are down in Mar-a-Lago is classified. It's declassified. And even if he took it down there and he said, nope, it's all declassified, the president and only the president is allowed to declassify records. So that's another pile of hoo-ha. The vice president cannot do that, but yet Joey B. did as vice president. He also did it as a senator. Huh? Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Let's keep going. They also found the excessively long list of Epstein Island. Oh, let's read just a few names. Al Gore, Alan Dershowitz, Alex Baldwin, Bang Bang Man, Anthony Weiner, the sexter, mm, Barack Obama, Ben Affleck, Bernie Sanders. Could you imagine that naked? Oh, God, I don't think I'll ever eat again. Celine Dion, um, Charlie Sheen, Chrissy Teague, Demi Moore, Drew Barrymore. All these people you thought were just wonderful actors, and I just love them so much. They were at Epstein's Island doing horrendous things to underage children. George Clooney, Ghislaine Maxwell, you know, the chick that came to New Hampshire and bought a huge multi-million dollar house that piloted all the underage girls and children back and forth to the island? Huh. Hillary Clinton, 
Jimmy Kimmel, Joe Biden, huh? John Cusack, Joy Behar. Oh, I think thou doth protest too much. Madonna, Michelle Obama. Did I say that right, or is it Michael? Paris Hilton, Prince Andrew, Prince Charles, Robert De Niro. That's just that's just like one tenth. The number of these pedophile arrests to date, zero, zero. Why? Because this attorney general's office refuses to, refuses to. All right. I will finish up with, I had on my show, and I'll be pre-recording it and I'll get it to you, a wonderful man by the name of Todd Bensman. And he's written several books on the border, the southern border. And he goes to Mexico on a regular basis. He crosses the border, even follows it down to El, the, the um, trek all the way down to El Salvador, etc. He just came back and he said, this is the most dramatic, huge amount of people crossing our border that he has ever seen. He said it's closer to probably five to seven million illegals crossing and coming into our country and with no end in sight. Title 42 ended. A, they have apps on their watch, uh, not on their watches, on their phones that let them fill out an app to come into the United States. They come to a crossing border, show their little app. Hi, here's my app. And they're allowed in. Nothing on that app says why you're coming, where you're coming from, what the problem is. So we don't know if they're coming here for amnesty. We don't know why they're coming here which is a problem, but they show the app and they're allowed to walk right in. The earliest court dates that they're getting are three to five years, three to five years. That's how far out the court dates are. Where do you think they're gonna be in one year? Three years, let alone five years. Do you think they're gonna show up to court and say, please, Please let me into this country. Oh, wait a minute, you already are. Thank you for letting me stay here for five years. I would now like to apply to be a citizen or I came here because I couldn't live in my country. Problem is, when you're leaving your country because it's dangerous, you're supposed to stop in the very next country. And Todd found several families that went to the very next country started up a business, bought a house, did very well, but heard from Joey B that our borders were wide open. They said, that's where I want to be, the country, the land of milk and honey. Obviously, had shown themselves to be trustworthy by buying a house and having a business and, and, and building up so they could come here. They've come here and they said everything was a lie that they were told. Everything is a lie that they were told. We have um, illegals being bussed all over the country in the dark of night, dumped at your airport. We have veterans and homeless people that have nowhere to live. They don't get money. They don't get a hotel room. They don't get a clean place to sleep. They don't get free food. What's going on here? This should not be happening. You want to come to the United States? You come here legally. You do the paperwork. Oh, but I don't have the money. Really? But how come you paid the coyotes $6,000, $8,000, $10,000, $20,000, but you don't have the money to apply for an application to come here legally to be able to get a job, to be able to pay taxes, to be able to function, to bring up your children here like we're working hard? Again, hypocrisy and lies. It's everywhere. It's rampant. We want to be compassionate, but not at the cost of educating our children, the health of our families, our veterans who signed a check for all, for the homeless who need a hand, a hand up, not a handout. 
And we need to have this country, the infrastructure, made whole because it is not right now. Everything is being shut down. We're being turned into a third world country. This isn't helping. So we all need to stand up and do our part. We need to stand there and hold our legislators accountable. They are our public servants. They work for you. We don't answer to them. They answer to us. That's the translation that's been lost in all these decades. Get the New Hampshire Constitution and read the very beginning. Your 39 enumerated rights. Rights that nobody can take from you ever. And the Constitution protects that. And if our legislators aren't standing behind that, then they're not doing their job and they need to be fired. Because this is the United States of America and we are a republic. We are not a democracy. We are a republic. Every time they say that, they're lying. It's not true. And in order to change any law and, and the Constitution, it takes two-thirds of we the people to change that. Not a legislator running around going, I want this many votes and we change that. You can't. Well, I mean, you can. And you can shove it down our throats, which you've done, but guess what? We're smart, we're reading, we're paying attention. And we figured out you work for us. So on that note, I'm gonna leave you. Have a great rest of your week. I'll see you next week. Stay safe, take care of your kids, take care of your family, and most of all, take care of America. See you next time.